In this video, let me show you how we can use Photoshop's color balance adjustment layer to fine tune color grading for our landscape images. As always, if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of this video. And now let's begin. Right away, let me show you what we will be doing with that color balance adjustment layer in the end in Photoshop. So this is our raw file coming freshly out of the camera raw editor. And we're going to use the color balance adjustment layer to give the image more warmth in the highlights and the midtones while targeting the shadows to make them colder. And this is super, super simple. But first, as always, we need to do the raw adjustments first. So let's get this out of the way. This is the image opened up in the camera raw editor. I'm going to start this by changing the profile going from Adobe color to Adobe landscape, just to bring up the saturation a bit and make the darkest parts of the image brighter. Now I'm going through the light tab real quick to fix the exposure. Looking at histogram, you can see this image is slightly unexposed, but this should not be a problem. The first thing I want to do is to bring down the highlights though, because I want to reveal more details in the sky. And as I bring down the highlights, you can see these clouds right here become visible. And that's exactly what I wanted to achieve by doing that. Then I'm going to bring up the blacks and bringing up the blacks, looking at the histogram once more, you can see this will fix the underexposure. I'm going to bring it up quite a bit just to be safe. At this point, we still are lacking some brightness, which I want to change by bringing up the whites. Always pay close attention to the histogram. Wonderful. Then we could add a bit more punch by bringing down the shadows a bit, just like that. And now I'm going to do something counterintuitive by bringing down the contrast itself. I just think doing this looks better on this image. There probably is no logical reason behind that. I just think it looks better. I think the exposure looks fine. We don't have under or over exposure, so we can continue with the next step in the color tab. Here we are going to adjust the white balance and saturation of the base image. I'm going to make this shot a whole lot warmer because I want to reintroduce those sunset colors. So let's bring up the warmth. I really like the warm colors in the sky, but you can see a pretty heavy green color cast in the shadows. That's because I was using a strong ND filter in this case, which has a slight green tint to it. So we want to fix that as well by bringing up the tint, bringing it more into the magenta range, and thus we're neutralizing that green color cast. Perfect. Then let's raise vibrance and let's raise the saturation. Wonderful. I'm also going to head into the effects tab because I want this image to be sharp. So let's bring up texture. Let's also raise the clarity slightly and bring up the dehaze a tiny bit. Perfect. That's looking much, much better. We can compare the image to the original raw file real quick. And you can see a huge difference thanks to the adjusted white balance and the adjusted exposure. Now let's do some masking. Let's open up the masking panel right here. And I want to start targeting the sky. So let's create a simple sky selection. On the sky mask, you can see Photoshop isn't getting every part of the sky selected behind that tree, but that's not a big deal. I just want to introduce a little more warmth to the sky on the horizon level. We need to further adjust this mask, however. So let's say subtract and choose a linear gradient. I'm going to subtract a part from the top because I want the top of the sky to stay cold. So I only want to target this part right here. And what I'm going to do in here is to simply bring up the temperature. And I'm also going to bring up the tint, giving this part of the sky just a little more warmth. All right, then let me create a single linear gradient with which I want to cover pretty much the water surface like this. I'm going to say subtract, select subject because I want to make sure this little island right here is not affected by this mask. And I'm also going to say subtract linear gradient and I'm taking away the darkest part from the water right in the foreground. What I want to do with this mask is to slightly brighten up the water by bringing up the whites, just adding some more punch to this scene. Wonderful, that's enough already. Then let's also work on the darkest parts in the water using another linear gradient. 
and you can see I'm just targeting those shadow areas right here where the rocks are shining through. I want to make them a little more visible so I'm going to add some clarity in here and I'm also going to add contrast and let's maybe bring down the exposure just a little bit. All right, and we could bring down the temperature in here because I want the shadows of the image to look a little colder. While we're doing this, we could also bring down the saturation to not get too crazy with the cold color tones, but this is looking really, really good. Now let's further work on the sky. I'm using one more linear gradient for that, just covering the very, very top part here. And that's because I want to make this area darker as well. So in here, simply bring down the exposure like this. We could also bring down the temperature, introducing some more blue tones to the top, but not too much, just a bit like this. All right, then let's create a radial gradient for some light effect coming in from the left side. I'm placing the center of this radial gradient outside of the image to get a more natural effect. And in here, what I want to do is to increase the whites just a little bit. And I'm also going to increase the blacks a little bit. Wonderful. That looks awesome. So that is the image after the masking adjustments. And again, let me show you the comparison from before with just the basic adjustments to after with the masking applied. Looking much better. The focus now lies on the subject in the center. And now we can continue with a little bit of color grading. So let's do this. We want to head into the color mixer and I'm going to start working on the hue. Here I want to reduce the yellow tones, make them appear to be more red or orange-ish. So I'm starting by bringing down the yellow hue like this. Let me also bring down the orange hue a little bit. Okay, I think I want to increase the red hue and I also want to bring down the green hue because the green tones on this island are a little distracting to me. That looks great. Now we can head over into the saturation tab, bringing up the saturation of all these color tones. So red, orange. I'm going to bring down the yellow tones because I think those don't look this good on this image. I'm also going to bring down the green tones a little bit and I'm going to reduce the blue tones. All right, looking good so far. Now we can do some split toning in the color grading panel and we want to start with the highlights. By the way, the color balance adjustment layer, which we are going to use later on, is kind of built up in the same way as the split toning is. We can control highlights, midtones, and shadows. Now you might be wondering why you use color balance when we have the split toning in the raw editor. The answer is those two tools affect the colors of your image in a different way. So it does make sense to kind of stack these adjustments on top of each other. Now with the color grading, what I want to do for the highlights is to simply apply a warmer hue to them. So I'm going to set up the hue to something in the orange range right around here and I'm going to bring up the saturation quite a bit. I think this is looking great. Then let's head into the midtones. Now for the midtones and the shadows, I want to kind of keep the image colder. And this way we are creating a very nice color contrast between the warm highlights and the cold midtones and shadows. So let me set up the hue with a cold color right around here. And I'm only going to slightly bring up the saturation because we don't want to overdo it, of course. I'm also going to do the same for the shadows, setting up a cold hue and let's bring up the saturation. Wonderful. Now that's almost it for the raw color grading. What I want to do as a last color grading step is in the calibration tool, I want to bring down the blue primary hue, which will just make the warmer tones look a bit more appealing in my opinion. I'm also going to bring up the saturation here. Let's also raise the green saturation and the red saturation. All right, this is looking great. Now, the only thing left to do in here is the sharpening in the details tab. So let's bring down the radius, increase the details, add a bit of masking while holding down the Alt key. So just like this, we can nicely sharpen the subject. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. That is the image after the raw adjustments. Now let's open it up in Photoshop and make use of the color balance adjustment layer. Click on open objects. 
we want to fine tune the colors a little more, head down to the adjustment layer menu right here. Click on this icon and you can see a bunch of different tools. What we want to use here is the color balance adjustment layer. Click on it once. We get this new layer with a layer mask attached. And under the properties window, we can now adjust this layer. Under this drop down menu, you can choose between the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows of your image. And down below, we will have three sliders with the balance between cyan and red, magenta and green, yellow and blue. In a way, this is kind of like a mixture between the split toning and the white balance adjustments of your raw editor. Now, let's start with the highlights. Just as with the split toning, we want to keep the highlights warm. And let's look at the first slider as an example. Here we have the option to go for a Zion look or for the red look. If you were to bring this slider down, the highlights would turn more and more Zion. And that's not what we want, because this would make the image look way too cold. So instead of bringing this slider down, we want to go into the red range very, very gently, not to overdo it. But as I bring up this slider, you can see how we're introducing these nice red tones to the highlights, which will improve that sunset look. And this way we can work our way through these different sliders. Now, do we want to have more green or more magenta in the highlights? Obviously, green does not fit for the highlights. So we want to drop this slider, introducing more magenta in the highlights. Again, always only applying very, very subtle changes because otherwise this is a very, very obvious effect. And finally, we can adjust the balance between yellow and blue. Since we don't want to have cold highlights, we're going to bring down this slider just a little bit, introducing more warmth to the highlights this way. Just like this. Wonderful. Now doing only these three adjustments, we already made a huge impact on the image. Let me turn off this color balance adjustment layer. And here you can see the difference from before to after. We can further work on this going into the midtones. In the raw editor, we applied colder color tones to the midtones. So it does make sense to also apply cold color tones in here at first. However, I think I actually want to slightly raise this slider further into the red side, introducing some more red tones to the midtones. On the other hand, I think some of blue color tones would look great for the midtones as well. So I'm going to bring up this slider very, very gently. And I don't think I want to touch the magenta green balance at this point. Now, what we can do as the last step would be to adjust the shadows, of course. And here for the shadows, we only want to apply colder color tones. So let's start with the bottom slider right here. I want to introduce a little more blue tint. So I'm going to bring up this slider very, very gently. And I also want to introduce more cyan. So I'm going to bring down the color balance between cyan and red just a little bit. This is looking really, really good this way. I don't want to overdo it. So I'm going to stop at this point with the color balance adjustment layer. Now again, here we have the image after the raw adjustments. And this is the image where we did some fine tuning on the color grading. Looks so much better. And this is a very easy and simple to use way for that. Now we can finish this image. Obviously I want to clean it up a bit. So let me go select the base layer right here. I'm going to use the spot healing brush and let's zoom in. I want to get rid of all these things. So I'm just going to paint over them really, really roughly. The spot healing brush should do a good job here. All right, looking much better cleaned up now. And there is one more thing I want to do. So let's go ahead, create another adjustment layer. This time I'm choosing hue and saturation because I'm not happy with those blue color tones. They are a little bit too strong. So instead of changing the master values here, I'm going into the drop down menu and let's choose the cyan tones and slightly bring down the saturation. She has to make this image appear to be a little warmer without overwhelming blue color tones. That's it for this little Photoshop tutorial. 
And let me know what you think about this color grading method. If you have any questions left, feel free to write a comment and thank you so much for watching this video.